everyone. Today I have the pleasure to talk with the CEO and founder of Rootcode, Lagan Mahalingam. Lagan, thank you for taking the time to speak with me. We are happy to have Rootcode at this year, the, the Innovation Summit. To start with, can you please tell us more about you, your professional background and current working focus? Right, so, so I am an engineer, software engineer myself. Um, who got kind of fascinated into AI and uh, uh, the general technology as a college student. And I started Root Code uh, when I was uh, in college as a final year student. And uh, over the last seven, eight years, Root Code has, you know, grown to this level with, you know, three offices internationally with 100 plus people. And uh, we are working on three different areas right now. One is uh, uh, software engineering, which is through Root Code Labs, uh, then into AI and machine learning through Root Code AI, and uh, uh, the user experience design through Root Code Studio. And uh, here for the Data Innovation Summit, we uh, are representing Root Code AI, uh, which but uh, by using Root Code AI, we help customers uh, build AI and machine learning based technologies, uh, mostly into computer vision, predictive analysis, uh, language understanding, you know, optimization, uh, hyper personalization, and then also conversational AI. Um, that's kind of a little about us. Thank you for that introduction. Uh, you mentioned that uh, you worked uh, and you've worked a lot with consumer facing applications. How do you think AI is going to transform user experiences in the future? Hmm. Uh, working uh, with customers at the same time, uh, working on AI and the user experience at the same time. I, I see a lot of intersection in, in AI and, and, and the user experience. Uh, I think that the transformation will be majorly through two directions. One is the uh, human computer interactions, uh, where we focus on technologies uh, that can help us interact with machines in a better way, uh, like conversational AI to, to voice recognition, to uh, action recognition and all that. And the second way is I, I personally think through hyper personalization, uh, where applications would become more customized towards the needs of each user. Uh, a great example would be, you know, things like the intelligent recommendation systems, uh, which can, you know, proactively suggest users' products uh, based on their previous purchases and preferences. Um, so at Root Code AI, for example, we work with, uh, we work at the intersection of these two concepts where we build uh, conversational AI agents that can um, not only assist users in their inquiries, but also can proactively suggest products. Uh, so I think the future of the uh, transformation would be geared towards, um, you know, harnessing AI uh, to build better user experiences and interactions with applications, uh, which are more accessible and, and also human centric. This was interesting to hear. Um, you've done a lot of work, as you say, within the space of conversational AI. What do you see as a challenge more than businesses face when adopting new consumer experiences, technologies like conversational AI and telecommunication systems, for example? I, I think working in the conversational AI and, and helping a lot of customers, I, I see many challenges that I've seen with my eyes. Uh, one of the, one of the challenge um, uh, in any AI project is always figuring out the data, right? Uh, and especially in the conversational AI, uh, training data is usually the conversations that happen between customers and the support agents historically. And, and these conversations generally have a lot of personal information like the customers, uh, personal IDs, name, purchase, and then so many things. So one of the challenges that we face uh, uh, while acquiring uh, kind of like the data and then you know creating the pipeline is to make sure to create proper data governance practices uh, like anonymization to, to mask personal and sensitive information. Um, another, another interesting challenge that I see is uh, uh, training existing human customer support agents to kind of work together with conversational AI instead of you know viewing them as a threat, uh, because in reality currently we have we have not gotten to the stage where conversational AI 
would be able to tackle any type of inquiries, right? Because there would be scenarios where some human input would be needed to train. And it's important for businesses to, you know, adapt and train the customer support agents uh, in a way to uh, uh, detect and understand when a conversational agent fails and, and you know, kind of help and train the model and, and to kind of exist in harmony with the machines. I think that's one of the challenges uh, that I see. Um, the third and most complex challenge uh, would be the technology because the contextual conversational assistants uh, which understand and navigate users through like very complex conversation, uh, it, it is very difficult to build uh, uh, something like that and it's still actually a very early research area uh, and that's what uh, through Code AI we try to specialize and help our clients uh, with our cutting edge research so that you know we can take care and build uh, modern conversational technologies as well. I hope this information will be helpful for many organizations. Um, Rootcode has a successful software development organization as well. You mentioned about that at the beginning, which is Rootcode Labs. From your point of view, how do team dynamics uh, differ from a software product engineering team to an AI team? I, I actually learned it the hard way because I thought running an AI company is going to be as uh, similar as the running a tech company. But I think there are very clear differences in team dynamics uh, between them. Uh, one of the main differences I see is the culture of experimentation. In classic software engineering, even though some form of experimentation is present, it does not really play a major role in the entire development process. On the other hand, uh, if you take uh, deep AI projects, uh, most of the team's effort will be spent on experimenting with different data exploration techniques and model architectures. So when building a data science team, it's important to embed a, a culture of experimentation where uh, new ideas and experiments are always encouraged, uh, even if they do not directly contribute uh, to the end product. And that I see as the biggest differentiator. Good to know about this. Do you have any final advice and recommendations for organizations that are starting to think about adopting an enterprise AI strategy, for example, where they should start, what to pay attention to? Right. I, I would say uh, uh, the first place to start would be to, you know, kind of perform a, a complete analysis of AI use cases uh, within multiple business divisions of the enterprise. And then the most important uh, factor to pay attention here is to make sure the entire strategy does not revolve around, uh, let's say, one particular product for one particular division. But instead, it should be it should look at the holistic view of the strategy and it, we should maintain that uh, strategy throughout. Um, for example, when we worked with one of the publicly traded uh, organizations in, in the United States to formulate their enterprise AI strategy, uh, the earlier step we took was to sit down and interact with the leaders of different business divisions of the organization to understand their bottlenecks. And then we laid out a plan uh, for the AI solutions that are needed to be implemented for their individual use cases. And then we started to implement our first AI solution uh, um, of optimizing the delivery routes while making sure that we uh, cater the solution that works for all of their divisions and then to kind of create a, a proper roadmap and a path for the AI uh, transformation. So uh, in my opinion, you know, enterprise AI strategy has to be laid out properly and holistically so that the organization can uh, move forward effortlessly. Great, thank you for sharing that expertise. And once again, thank you for this conversation. See you soon uh, at the Data Innovation Summit, uh, you and the whole Root Code team. Thank you, Narasha, it was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you.